In this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we made 100 liter beer steins for a local brewing company's Oktoberfest party. I wanna do a little something different for this video. I'm gonna talk over the video and go into detail the exact steps in this process. So obviously we start with clay. We're starting with buff stoneware from Continental Clay. Each ball is two and a half pounds. So normally when we make a mug, we use around one pound, but for this, we use two and a half pounds. We start by centering the clay. So I cone up, cone down, and then make sure that that clay is perfectly in the center because we don't want anything to wobble. It's super important to get it really centered. We then make the hole in the middle and bring it out. And we're starting with a wider base since we have to bring it in and then bring it out at the top. We're kind of making that hourglass shape for these steins. That's a shape that I just thought was really cool for this stein. Last year we did a mug for them that was a little bit different. So now I'm pulling up the clay. So I'm getting all that weight from the bottom up to the top. So typically I can get three or four pulls and I'll get most of the weight from the bottom and have a really even thickness. The even thickness is super important for all different reasons. You know, drying, it's really important in clay that things dry evenly. So I use that metal rib on the side to just even out the finger marks. And then we wait a few hours and they're ready to flip over. So we flip them over and then Kai is gonna trim the bottoms because obviously the, the bottoms aren't perfect until we trim them. So he just takes a little bit of clay off that edge to create that foot uh, and then just a little off the edge to create a nice smooth bottom using a sponge there to smooth the bottom. Kai has been with me in the studio for the last four years and he does a lot of the trimming and handling. I typically will do all the throwing. So now he's getting ready to put handles on and we will usually extrude all of our handles. We like, I personally like the even thickness. These are the dies that go in the extruder. So he puts that ball of clay in the extruder and then that plunger pushes it right through the die and makes a perfect handle shape. It's a really easy way to make a lot of handles quickly. So he's extruding that. He'll take it and usually we'll do 30 to 35 handles at a time. That's about how much can fit in there. We're using this six inch post to measure. That's kind of our, our gauge of handle size. Obviously these are large mugs. So we're using probably eight to nine inches for each handle. He's using that tool to score the mug, and then he'll also use the same tool to score the handle, which scoring just basically just scratching little scratch marks in it. Then we use slip on the scoring to attach the clay. So anytime we put clay on clay, we want to score and slip. That kind of acts as like a glue whenever you're attaching clay together. And it's really important that the consistency of the clay is about the same between the handle and the mug. That's gonna make sure that we don't get anything popping off and that there's a really good connection between that clay. So then he blends it in so it just kind of looks like that handle is growing out of the mug. You know, we wanna make sure that the handle and the mug form go together and that they are complementary. So now Kai's putting a thumb rest on the top. So this is something that works well for bigger mugs or steins or just if you wanna add a little extra something to your mug. So again, slipping and scoring that thumb rest on there. Feels really good in your hand when you have that thumb rest on top of the mug. It also provides a design aesthetic too that works really well. So again, Kai's just blending that really well, make sure it all goes together. Now we're gonna work on the medallion, the logo that actually goes on top of the mug. So this is the Waconia Brewing Company logo. So these are designed, the stamp that we use for this is uh, made by Justin's Makery. So right now we're just making the slab. So we put the slab through the slab roller and then we score one side of it so that that's the side that will attach to the mug. Again, scoring and slipping. And then he uses this uh, paint scraper to really smooth out because that slab roller creates little indentations and so we have to do that. The cornstarch, this little white powder stuff is cornstarch that we put on there to keep the stamp from sticking to the slab. So here's the stamp that's made by Justin's Makery. He does a great job. So they gave us our lo their logo Waconia Brewing Company, and then we had that Oktoberfest, and then now this one says 2023. 
So last year we did one for them that didn't have a year on it, but they said this year can we make it kind of a collectible item and then every year there'll be a different version of this beer stein for their Oktoberfest party. So Kai stamps the mug and then has the cutter, the cookie cutter that cuts it out, grabs the mug, again, scoring and slipping, lots of scoring and slipping, you can tell. Uh, then we'll put the slip on the logo Put that logo onto the mug and then we just refine the edges around it make sure that everything is looking good smooth it out a little bit the stamping is really important for later in the process when we have to glaze that logo so we will end up putting black glaze inside that logo so then kai puts my stamp the jtp right on the bottom there and then we're also numbering the each individual mug so we're making a hundred and they're going to be collectible items so each number has number like one dash a hundred or two dash a hundred so after we finish the mugs but we let them dry and we bisque them and then so that the bisque is the first firing so it's a little lower temperature but it just gets the mugs in a place that they're ready to glaze so now they've been fired once already and we're ready to glaze them so kai's going to take this black glaze and put it inside of the logo. So get it all in, all those indentations, and then we'll clean out the sponge and wipe it clean so that it reveals the black glaze just stays in the logo. This is a really great way to make a logo pop. Uh, and then after we put that glaze in the logo, we have to wax resist over top of it. So we're gonna paint this wax on the top. This wax will eventually burn off at a pretty low temperature. But what the wax does is it keeps other glaze from getting on top of that. So we put the black glaze in and then we will dip the mugs into different glazes, but we don't want that glaze to cover up the black glaze that's already in the logo. So we've gotten all these, this batch of them all done. So now I'm gonna dip this in our first glaze, which is Mako Red, which we don't have that much of right now. So we had to, we can't just dip it. We had to pour it in first. Then I rotate as I pour out so it, get, it glazes the lip. Then I will dip the rest of it in there. And then as you can see, the glaze just falls right off because the wax is on there. So then that's the first layer. So that's the red glaze. The second glaze we're gonna put on there is Aurora Green, also from Mako. And we did this glaze because this is kind of the Wakoni Brewing Company colors. Their logo is red and blue. And so this will end up being like a really pretty red and blue that I thought matches their logo. So then, we dip it in that last glaze, Aurora Green, wipe the bottom with a sponge, and then wipe the logo. So as you can see, I am dipping like crazy here. Got about 30 done, and this is about how many we can fit in one kiln. So this is a third of the whole order. As far as loading it in, now we're gonna load it into the second firing, so this is the glaze firing. So this will be hotter. It'll be about 2200 degrees. We have to make sure that's gonna fit. So we put kiln posts in there. We load them in, we stack as many as we can get, which is about 11 per shelf and then three shelves. And this is my Scut 1027 kiln. There it is. And then we close it up and we come back the next day and it's done. So now we're ready to unload the kiln. Came, the logos came out really nicely. We've gotten a lot better at the logos over the last few years. Everything came out really well. Last year we had some issues with this order, so we had to refire a lot, but we haven't had to refire any of these so far. The clay on the logo did come out kind of darker than I expected, but still looked really good. Everything was looking great. The thumb rests on top are super comfortable to hold. These are really, really big mugs. Like. They hold 33 ounces of beer, which is a liter. So now the next step in the process is we finish all the bottoms. So we grind the bottoms, make sure they're smooth, clean them up, and then now we're bringing them to Wakoni Brewing Company to uh, show them the first few that are done, which is super exciting. They were very happy and it's been a super fun project. So I wanna say shout out to Wakoni Brewing Company. Thanks so much for this order and I hope you guys Enjoy the process. Wakoni Brewing Company was kind enough to pour me some beer in these new mugs. 
These Leader Beer Steins will be available for purchase at Waconia Brewing Company's Oktoberfest party at the end of September. If you want to get one, check them out. They are collectible items. Each one is individually numbered from 1 to 100. Uh, our next restock is July 9th if you want to get any pots online. Our Epic Pottery event is coming up in August, August 12th and 13th. And then check us out on Patreon. We have a ton of great new tiers if you want to get pottery, discounts, and let you know whenever we have pottery available. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.